Hello, good evening, and welcome back to the Purdy Factory. Uh, I am Mazira, Tom Nichols, Transformation Manager and Senior Craftsman for James Purdy and Sons. Um, welcome back to our feature that we've been running over the last few months on these uh, eight stages of gun making. Um, tonight we're on our fifth video, but our sixth stage. So we're going to be very lucky to speak to um, our senior stocker, uh, Richard Bailey, who's going to run us through the process of stocking a bass gun. So quite a complex um, stage. We move away from metal quite a lot. There is still quite a bit of metal work involved in stocking, um, but we're moving on to the really organic side of it, so the, the wood. Um, I'll let Dickie do the explaining, because he's the expert, and uh, we'll head on down there now and see. Richard Dickey Bailey, uh, master stockmaker, uh, over 45 years worth of uh, experience. I want to say. Yeah, yeah. Um, very privileged tonight for him to be here to actually explain to us the lovely art of stock making. I'm a frustrated stocker at heart, <laughs> so. Uh, but I'll let you crack on um, and do the, uh, do the presentation. Okay. Cool. Right. Um, you start off. We go over here first of all. This is how a stocker would receive the gun from the previous uh, part of the factory. Um, so we've got part from the gun, we've got the trigger plate, all the parts for the stack work, which I'll explain later on, and all the pins we would fit. Um, CNC's been spoken about uh, previously, so the bit of help we have had in the stocking shop. When I came, that used to be like that. We now are a bit more refined. Um, over under tube, same thing. And bolt, just a bit more refined than they used to be. Um, right, let's go. Sorry. So we do about perhaps a day and a half of filing and fitting up stuff before we pick a piece of wood up. People often ask. You know why what's the stocker doing filing <laughs> um i always understood it was a hangover from like muzzle loading um fleet lock days where the stocker got his lump of wood a barrel a lock or locks trigger plate and the rest of the furniture and he basically built the gun um so that's why I've been told that we, we've carried on doing it. I don't think a lot of other stockers do. And James Perry, the founder, was a stocker as yeah, well. So yeah, I think that's where it's... Yeah. It's always something to be a stocker. Yeah. Frederick Beasley was a stocker. Yeah. So... Yeah. I'm a good company. Great, great lineage. Yeah. <laughs> um, right, so that's picking up... So, fouring, first of all. So, fouring bolt. We've cut out the fouring line. Fit the bolt. Um, the tube will be filed up, fitted onto the, <coughs> the frying line, and the rod fitted. So we would end up with that. Is it working? And this goes on the back. So the stocker would also cut the loop. That would be a blank piece of metal when we get it. So you can see that work going on. Okay, so that's what holds the frying line on. That's my trigger plate. So, trigger plate. This still needs easing into the action. So we file in, we gently ease that in to fit, draw the hole, fit the pin, um, we fit the breech pin, that's that one, and hand pin, now we're setting the strap, it should have been set roughly in the action shop. But depending on the bend here, 
as a relation to how low the, the bend on the shaft's got to be. <coughs> so we might have to set that down or up, depending. So we're checking that's right. We're checking the cast on the straps right. We've let the trigger plate in, and we're getting the cast on that the same as the strap. And we're getting this dimension correct. Obviously different sizes for different boards. And then we're going over these wood bearing surfaces just to make sure they're nice and flat. Um, anything that touches wood we want dead flat. Um, the old boys used to say they don't want it like a bears behind <laughs> but they didn't say behind <laughs> i would just say at this point as well that dick is actually uh tapping and drilling all the holes as well so yeah. when it comes to the fitting of the pins it's not that the holes are already there and the threads are already there they're actually being drilled tapped yeah um the pins are being threaded and, and fitted properly so um it's quite a big job actually yeah. so i yeah. thought that's worth mentioning to us <clears throat> next The other bit of help stock has had since I've been here is we make a mould of the action, trigger plate, lock plates and lock work, as you can see that's that one, and then local wood. I'll talk about the wood later on, but we'd roughly cut that out to the dimensions we require, bend and length. And then we're using a pantograph machine, so they connect the, the, the pattern and, and the stock are connected together. And we're tracing around this with a stylus, and using a cutter that's smaller than the stylus, we're, we're reproducing this on the blank, but leaving about, I think metric now, half a millimetre everywhere. It's really rough as well when it's actually yeah. done, it's not, it's nowhere near. So it should, it would come off the machine like that basically. Right, now we're back to hand fitting. You've seen the action shop, um, the amount of smoke black we use, this is exactly the same. Mm. So thin layer of black, when it comes off the machine it'll probably go on to about there. So we're tapping this on, taking it off, seeing where it's touched, cutting those high places away. So we gently creep back until it should fit like that. That's a push fit onto there. I'll just black it and show you a bearing. Black again. Give it a tap. And you can see exactly where it's touched. on. Um, trigger plate, exactly the same, smoke black. Um, gently easing it down. We, now we're using, I imagine, uh, foot chisels like that. This is to get right down inside here and along inside this. So we're gently using that trigger plate down now until we get the right measurement through the hand. And everything is that sort of fit. So I'm not hitting this hard and it's not loose or wide. Now breech pin. Um, so we're going through the strap, screwing into the trigger plate. Now the hole in the wood we make, very slightly misaligned. So as that pin's pushing in now, that's pushing on the back of the action on the strap, pulling that action back on. Very important, that holds it all close. That is the world's biggest 
task. Right? Yeah, he's. <laughs> So hand pin, same thing. No draw on that, no, it's just straight through to the top of the strap. Lock plates next, same as before. Smoke black, tap them in, take them out, coat ropes bearing till we are easing down to the right measurement. We want it across the locks. All of this is really critical at the moment for later on in the stages when he comes to do the finishing of the gun. Everything that Dick's putting in these positions here now will determine how we have to actually regulate the gun when it comes to us. So it's so vitally important, especially the hand pin and the angle of the hand pin and everything that comes through for us to have enough room to get all the working parts actually working inside the gun. So it's, it's, it's so vital, I can't. I can't say anymore. <laughs> so please. We are trying really to leave as much wood in this yeah. as we can. So next, lock work, same thing, smoke black, cut the bearings. Difference now is we've got moving parts in here. So none of this is it's close, but it's, it's clear to be able to move. Then we've got a pin through the locks on, on over under, so beside you wouldn't have that. Next job, we would file up the safety and trigger work. So, safety slide, this is longer when we get it and might not be in the right position. as well so so this would be a blank trigger when we get it so we're cutting it out cutting this down to be the right measurement through there and as you can see safety off the trigger would work so that so stopper hangs all the trigger work again then, it's cool for us <laughs> <laughs> then same as before smoke black, we loads of smoke black, so uh, safety slide in the wood and the uh, safety spring, trigger work all that in the wood, exactly the same, make sure it all moves, this is all again all got to be free. And then we're letting in a lot of little parts. So obviously Cams that cock the gun we let in, lever spring, strikers and firing, pi firing pins, same thing. Bob weight, all these let in one at a time separately using smoke black. So now we should have, I'll put it back together again. Now we've got all our action work, but we're still 
on a block. Mm -hmm. So now we're ready to shape the stock or we say make off. What I'll do though correctly is to show you somebody's letting in. This is one Louis doing, my apprentice. So smoke black. Shop, she's got a scrape pit, we'll get one. And you can see we've gone down a little bit further this time. marked again. I won't do any more, but you get the drift. So we're slowly going down and down until it touches. And then we probably have to foot chisel, as we, you saw before, cut the bottom away so we're getting into the right measurement. Right. Just a quick uh, we just had a request come through, see if we could uh, just spray some of the wood with some water, just to save some of the beautiful figure that comes out. We'll be covering a lot of this when we come to the finishing shop and how we oil finish the stocks, and that really pops the figure for life. Um, but this, I'm spraying this one because it's not yet been worked on. But we often use water when with customers selecting wood um, and also buying it, just so you can take it to a slightly darker colour and you can see the figure come out. So you can see this end here, which is lovely and dry still, and it's got. A, very light colour. Well, I've just sprayed some water on there. You can see that the figure's really popping out of that. It's really, really useful, and it's only surface water, so it doesn't affect the wood and doesn't make the wood any more wet. Um, it just gives you a nice idea of what the final colour is going to be um, and what figure it's got going on in it. So, there you go. Have that. So, I'll carry on from there actually. Cut the stock lengths. So, all Turkish worn out now. When I came here it was French. 
Uh, personally, I prefer the French. It's a bit easier to work. Um, now, why walnut? Well, it's, it's a perfect gunstock wood, really. Well, if it's dried properly, it doesn't split, warp, or shrink much at all, really, when it's dried properly. Um, it's a nice weight for a gunstock, and it looks beautiful. Now, that, that, all these pieces, these are very old trees, so probably the bulk of that would have been underground when this was tree was alive. So, looking at this as well, you can see we're nice and straight. That's a stunning bit. Yeah. So, that would be where the hand's going to be, where, where we're weak. So, we want a nice straight grain. And down here can really go where it likes, really. So now we're ready to main pour. Right, pull to middler. This line runs right down the gun the whole way until we get to the back of the action. And then we're, you're starting to see cast. So the stock's coming over this way slightly. Remember, remembering really this is still a block really at the moment. So I'd mark that centre line on the back of the stock and under the comb and, and the top of the hand. Then can we see that line? Mm -hmm. So that's that line there and there. So that's the centre of the gun line. Now I've marked over the amount of cast the customer needs there and there. So now this is the centre of the stock. So cast on or cast off? Yep. Cast yeah. off for right handed shooter, cast on for left handed yep. shooter. I should say something about measurements at this point actually. Um, at point of order, um, any customer that is, is buying a Purdy, be it Best, uh, PTP, Sport, or any of our products, um, we ask to come in for an actual bespoke measurement. Um, we encourage that to be at our shooting school, at Royal Berkshire Shooting School, um, with one of our highly qualified instructors there. From there, we effectively get the exact bespoke measurements for the, for the person. They'll shoot with something called a tri gun, which is a gun that can have its measurements adjusted, it can be unscrewed and moved. The cast, as we were talking about there, left and right for a left, uh, right handed shooter or a left handed shooter. The bend, which is the up and down of the stock, which depends on face shape. And the length, which is dependent on your arm um, and your mounting position. Um, it's so bespoke. I mean, I've never come across, really rarely you come across one set of measurements that is no, the same as the other. Slightly different, yeah. Um, so much like a tailor fitted suit, you get a tailor fitted stock. Um, so, yeah, sorry to interrupt. Yeah, that's okay. So, we've marked on our cast, and then we would cut the bend down to the correct measurement. This is a straight line, right along the top of the rib. This measurement and that measurement, I'll show you the bend here. Mm -hmm. So... So that gets those measurements. On. Generally, the we'd have middle, bump, and toe. So those three measurements would give us that butt end, that angle. Sometimes now, people are giving us a uh, just a middle measurement and then a pitch. So what that is. <clears throat>
So we would do our pitch like this, so it still needs to be more. Mm -hmm. So we would now be dead square on the bottom. And this is the pitch measurement, either in a, 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 a measurement, or sometimes we're given that angle. So we don't always get those three length measurements. Sometimes we're getting a pitch. Right, now as I said, it's still blocks. So I've got all those measurements marked on. Now we're band sawing as much off as we can. And then we're plain uh, surf form rasps to take our block down. So <coughs> The shape. So, a lot of variations now. Obviously, straight hands, pistol grip. This one. Um, I've got some old stocks over here with different. Which people might find interesting. So we don't see them much now, but. This is a normal cone. This is an American cone. Don't do many of these now. We used to do lots of them, but. Obviously different grips. We can go from very laid back. That's a Woodward type grip. Rounded pistol grip. Very full pistol grip. Monte Carlo on this as well, that's unusual. Don't see that anymore. So as we're making the stock off, this is everyone's different. You can have a lot of different uh, variations on that on the stock. So um, sides are made off. I can do a little bit on this one. Purdy is quite a distinctive stock shape. If you can see those curves on that. So, both sides are concave, but the face side is slightly less concave than the other. So we'd fit this gauge to that perfectly. I've already done that side. And this side, as you can see, is the slightly more concave shape. So I need some from there. Bit of shaping. end up eventually I can't do it now it take too long <laughs> I'm near enough there though in that shape so we have quite a distinctive stock shape probably if you look along that you'll see the top is very slightly swept and all of this 
this is made of. We have gauges at certain places. It'll fit the stock. It'll fit both sides. Have one there. So it'll be pretty well the same shape. It obviously alters in dimensions for between the 12 and the 20 and 28 or it differs. Right, then we would let the gold in. Same thing, we're back to smoke back again. Have to cut the colour wood away and chisel the guard in. Um, pistol cap. Make the rest of the hand off. Cut the shape of the drop points on. And then fold the head up. Please. Like that. So you call this a drop point. Usually people don't want them when they look like that. Right, so then we're a coat of linseed oil and that stock is basically made off finished. Then um we could do the we I'll talk about the four engine mark then. you can see on that butt end you can see a very slight round shape but there's a plug in the end of there so inside of that stock will look like that so we're boring the stock to get weight out of it. We can get up to six ounces out sometimes, depends, sometimes more. And we're doing that for it. You can see the holes there. And this is with normal, normal bits. All the way down. Using these to make sure we don't see how thin that is down there. Right, stock's bored, plug the end up. Now you can either have a check on the button, like that one, or rubber pad. Some people like to tie pieces. Should be those. They look nice when they're on actually. Now we're gold oval. Gold letters sometimes. Or or crests quite often. Right, that's the stock basically done. I'll go back a little bit now to the fore end. So we're starting off with a little chunk of wood again. Now this is all handwork on a splinter fore end, so there's no machining done on this. Same thing, smoke black, fore end irons let in, tubes let in, bolts let in. It's all let onto the barrels. Diamond we let in and tip. It's all exactly the same, it's all smoke black work. That's that one. Four inch made off. Now we do get different. It's a normal four, four end we call a splinter. This is a beaver tail. It should be done. See much anymore. Let's see how it wraps. 
that wraps around the gun like that. Same with an over under, that's a normal four end. That would be a beaver tail. It's a lot, lot longer, a lot fatter. shape as well while we're on it. I'll just mention it obviously occasionally we get a throw I've done one since I think I've been here cross-eyed. So this is right shoulder, no right eye, you're shooting with your left eye. Um, I'll quickly mention as well, I don't think anyone has so far, double rifles. Stocking wise, exactly the same as the side by side. Apart from, we've got a top strap extension that goes in there. Um, the trigger plate is the long one instead of being the short one, so it comes all the way to the cap. And of course, the pistol cap and trap, and cheek piece. So we do get quite a variation of different bits in the stocking shop. <laughs> right, quick bit of chest ring on there. Yeah. We're done. Quick question we had just now about oil as well. Uh, game up. So it mentioned about folding seed oil. Um, it has a similar effect actually. Sorry, I'm not going to Similar effect uh, to the water. Gives you that lovely colour again, which brings out your figure. At this stage, the gun's still got quite a long way to go, so the oil's actually going in to the very dry wood at this stage uh, to give it some nourishment um, and to harden off in the grain to give the finisher a little bit of a head start when we come to play with it later on. We use um, another oil, which is linseed based, uh, called red oil, uh, which has alkanite root sucked into it, which gives it the red colour. So we will be covering that when we get to finishing um, in a couple of months. But yeah, that's uh, this is a protective coat for now, whilst the guns are going to be heading off uh, to engraving, or well, the rest of the guns are going to be heading off to engraving. Right, I'll show you a quick piece of checkering. Stronger glasses. It all looks like that. So first of all, we would might we cut a single line. sits in that single line, follows it and cuts the next one.
go over the whole button like that. And then we're using a tool like that to turn those lines into more pyramid shapes. Just do a little bit. Now this is 18 lines an inch, the hand is 26, um, I can whack that on the button quite quickly because it's flat but going round a round surface obviously a lot more difficult, I'll show you quickly how small the other checker is in comparison. So as you can see, it's a lot smaller, the hand checker. And that's pretty well it. Thanks, Dick. <laughs> Very well explained. Yeah, there's a lot, lot going on there. It's yeah. really, uh, yeah, it's a lot to big job. Try and remember and... Yeah, stocking's a big job and um, a very highly skilled one, so uh, thanks very much. Um, I hope everyone's found it interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I think I found it interesting. Good. <laughs> um, so, thank you very much for uh, joining us. Um, join us next time, which will be in late November, uh, where we're going to be looking at the next stage, which is going to be engraving. So we're going to try and set something quite special up for that. Um, and I hope you can join us then. So until then, stay safe. And again, thanks, Richard. And um, yeah, see you again yeah. soon. Bye. Cheers. Bye.